And when Governor Bruce Rauner laid out his first state budget, he included huge cuts to colleges and universities. A decrease in funding this big would create problems for the flagship University of Illinois and struggling schools like Eastern Illinois. For years, state support for education has been cut. For colleges and universities, Rauner wants to cut it further. Although yesterday's budget would increase money for K-12 programs, it would slash funding for higher education by $400 million. EIU political science professor Jeff Ashley says children's programs now I have a so get more attention. If they see many anyway, um, that higher ed isn't necessary, that it's an option whereas K-12 isn't reality with today's economy, higher ed's fairly necessary. It could be a big hit for universities already struggling. EIU President Bill Perry says the loss would be very severe. Losing 31 percent of its state funds would mean EIU gets 14 million dollars less. That's equal to more than 75 employees salaries. Yeah, 31 percent would be devastating. The University of Illinois would lose more than $200 million in funding, a cut President Robert Easter says would substantially harm our students. But Ashley says college students are just easy targets. Until that happens, they are. There are advocates for senior citizens. There are advocates for poor. Um, students have to be their own advocates here, and they, they don't. If the concepts in Rauner's budget pass the legislature, funding will focus on those with cubbies instead of dorm rooms. It's time to make education our top priority again. The Neoga School District has been in financial trouble for a few years, recently cutting its budget, teaching positions, and deciding to close its elementary building. Now that Illinois schools are getting less money from the state, Neoga residents have to decide between paying lower taxes or saving their schools. Down here we pull over for funerals. We, we respect other people. We try to take care of our widows and, and our kids and everything. And I, I think that really appealed to us to get back here. Business owner Chad Clark moved back to Neoga with his wife and four kids after years in the Chicagoland area. That small town feel he was looking for is what some residents hope to keep in Neoga by passing a referendum in April, raising property taxes by almost 1% to help solve the district's budget shortfalls. Without the tax increase, Neoga's kids would be bused to other towns, and that's why the Neoga Community Alliance gathered the town to talk about their options. Alliance co-chair Christy Busher went through the school system, and she sees the charm. There's some value to the teachers knowing the kids, the teachers calling you if the kid isn't having a good day because they know you by name. Co-chair Brian Titus says no school is just the first step downhill for small towns. The younger people aren't moving in, uh, the older people are moving out that, that are associated with those children. And again, the town just starts a process that, that leads to somewhere that, you know, we don't want Neoga to become that community. Of course, raising taxes is rarely a popular subject. Well, it is not fun. No one wants a tax increase. I see it from the perspective as a business owner that, yeah, I don't want my property taxes to raise. But, but in a meeting full of questions. How long is that going to get this to keep the doors open? What funds are, are the levies going to be in? It was the perspective of one young student that made the whole room fall silent. But if the schools open, are we going to be losing teachers again? Are we going to have to move buildings again? If the elementary school is closed, we only have two buildings. We can't close The Alliance says the average Neoga landowner would pay $500 more a year in property taxes. It's hosting another meeting March 16th, a few weeks before the referendum is up for a vote April 7th. With Valentine's Day Saturday, many of us will have flowers or chocolate around the house, but some of those romantic gifts can actually be a threat to your pet. Well, this time of year, you get flowers for your wife or girlfriend, and the last thing you want to do is make her cat sick, because that's probably going to end up um, not getting the results you wanted from those flowers. Flowers are a big part of February, but the ASPCA says flowers like lilies, chrysanthemums, tulips, and azaleas can actually be toxic to animals. Floris Mary Brown says she's even seen sick birds. My mother has a canoe parrot, 
and many years ago she had a philodendron, which is a green plant that she had sitting on the hearth of her fireplace, and it just went to town eating it. And he just laid lethargic at the bottom of the cage. We buy flowers for the pretty part or the bloom up top, but Brown says it's actually the sap in the stems that could be dangerous to animals. So if you stay away from anything that's real sappy, that would be better. Testing it out could kill them. Even certain treats could be a danger too. Chocolate can be very toxic to dogs in large amounts um, and like macadamia nuts. But it's easily preventable just by putting the plants out of reach. Being super careful and thinking about those things and you know and thinking you know does is this an animal that we have to be careful about. As for the most classic bouquet you could say those petals are palatable. Roses are actually pretty non-toxic. Um, matter of fact, you can eat those if you want to. Brown says they've seen an increase in orders for spring flowers instead of typical red roses just because people want to try something different or unique. For more information on flowers that are toxic to pets, you can head to our website, weiu.net.